So in the past, when talking about vibration, I've talked about these devices. Some of them are what I would consider ultra low displacement, meaning they move less than one millimeter, sometimes 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters, generating less than one G of force. These ultra low displacement devices are claimed to, in some circumstances, be good for hip and spine, bone density, improving bone density, slowing bone loss, improving bone quality. I don't think the literature supports that. So when I heard about OsteoBoost, the vibration pack that you wear on your hips, when I heard about OsteoBoost, I was skeptical to say the least. And I said so in my initial video, but then OsteoBoost's CEO reached out to me. She introduced me to their chief medical officer, their research team, their advisors, and we reviewed their data together. So I made a second video. We talked about this published peer reviewed journal article in this second video and talked about how there is a significant slowing of bone loss in the intervention group, the group that used the OsteoBoost device. So today's video is going to be a follow-up on that. And I have continued to communicate with the team at OsteoBoost. We've continued to talk about where this product can fit into the market. So what I want to do today is talk about the product itself. I actually have the product. I'm actually wearing it right now as I'm recording this video. I've put it on my wife. I've had her walk around with it. So I have a sense of how this thing could be used. And I want to update the audience on my thoughts around this device and then also how you can get this device if this is something that you're interested in. All right. So again, what is OsteoBoost? What is this thing that I'm talking about? Well, this is a wearable vibration-based device that's designed to slow bone loss in postmenopausal women. And like I said, I'm wearing it right now. So it obviously isn't loud. It's not uncomfortable. This is something that I could easily do for the recommended 30 minutes every day. And it delivers what I previously described as ultra low displacement, 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters of displacement in the frequency in that magic zone of 20 to 40 Hertz. That means it's moving 20 to 40 times per second back and forth. This is comparable to the standing platforms like Meridine or Juvent. It's comparable to power plate, but there are some big differences between a power plate device and the device that I'm wearing right now. Now, what's interesting about this device is the way that it actually calibrates on the pelvis. So I'm not sure how low this uh, shot's going, but I have the device on and I don't know if you can see what it's doing back here, but it essentially sits on my sacrum and the front of it goes around the, the points of your hip. So your iliac crest, your anterior spirit, iliac spine, if you want to call it that, but those points on your hip, on the front of your hip. And what it's doing is essentially vibrating at those metrics that I described. It's vibrating on my sacrum, which is delivering vibration directly to my pelvis, directly to my lumbar spine and my hips. Now, what's cool is that this is a very easy device to use. You simply put it on, hit the power button, or the other way around. It auto calibrates. And then if everything's checking out, it'll turn on, it'll run for 30 minutes and then it'll turn off. Now I had the experience of putting this on my wife for the first time. And I made the mistake, I think like a lot of people probably will, which is to put it up too high. So I put it up more like on the waist, even though they clearly told me not to do that, put it up on the waist. And what was great though, is that this was a good experience to demonstrate that when it tries to calibrate and it's not on the pelvis, it won't turn on. So it needs feedback from the front and the back of your pelvis in order for it to turn on and stay on. Now you can use this if you're standing like I am right now, you can walk around with it. I've walked around with it, you know, in the house doing light chores, as long as you're remaining upright, you can't sit in it because as soon as you sit, it's going to change the position of the device in your pelvis and it's probably going to turn out. And to describe the feeling of it, it is like a, I would say like a gentle massage. If you've used, we've even done reviews of like the uh, the muscle impactors, the things that move up and down with like with vibration. So those devices that are like percussion hammers, like those devices kind of feel like this, except it's more gentle than that. It also has a pad on the front. So it's not like a hard thing hitting your pelvis. It's very comfortable. Again, like a gentle massage. You can feel it sort of like reverberating through the, the gluteal muscles behind the pelvis. So my initial impression of the device is that it's solid. It's compact. I think it feels well built, high quality materials, as you would expect for a medical grade device. The one button operation makes it really user friendly. There's really nothing here that is going to throw somebody off if they're not tech savvy or if they're not used to electronic devices. Again, this is very much 
put it on, hit the button. That's all you have to do. It does come with an app and I'll talk about what the app is, but the app is not required. It just adds additional value, additional tools to consider using. I do want to touch though on the difference between this device and say the Juvent or Meridine devices that you stand on that I've talked about before. I think that those devices, if you look at the literature, are not going to be powerful enough if standing on them to have enough impact force going through the hip and the spine to increase bone density and reduce fracture risk. I just don't think the literature supports that. Compare it though to like the power plate, something with displacement around two, three, four millimeters that you are definitely going to feel in your hips, in your spine. And if you have a power plate device, you know that this is true. But the Juvent Meridine have similar metrics the same frequency, the same displacement, as does the OsteoBoost. Then why is it that the OsteoBoost, I think, is effective at slowing down bone loss, whereas the others probably are not? The difference is, is where it's located. And actually, if you go back to, I think it was my second video after my interview with Dr. Rubin, I uh, talked about the research of the devices. And you know there are studies showing that in the lower tibia on CT and in children, you can see changes in the bone at the level of the plate, meaning in the lower tibia, so the lower leg, down by the ankle. If you stand on these devices that have ultra low displacement, you're, you could see impact locally around that area. It just gets dissipated as it moves through the body. So unlike the Juvena Meridine where you're standing on it, now in the OsteoBoost, this vibration is right on your pelvis. So again, literally right on the sacrum, the back part of the pelvis, and you're going to feel that all throughout the, the pelvis. In fact, I even have my handy dandy model here. So again, what where this thing is literally sitting is on the back of the sacrum. So it's going to sit right on the pelvis. It's going to deliver vibration this way, this way, this way. You're going to feel it in your hip, which is here. You're going to feel it in your lumbar spine, which is also very close by, right? If it's vibrating right here, you're going to feel it right here. You're going to see an impact in your lumbar spine. This makes sense, obviously, and in both of your hips. And those are the areas where we are most interested in preventing fracture. Of course, this is a fully a full body disease. This is a systemic disease. And yes, we want to improve bone everywhere, but hip fracture is something that we really want to avoid at all costs. You might be asking yourself if you have one of these devices like the Juvent or the Meridine plates, if you have one of those devices, I've heard many people in our osteocollective community ask me, hey, what if I sit on it? Well, I actually asked Clint Rubin that question and he wouldn't answer it because it hasn't been researched. But if you go to the Juvent website, they actually sell a frame that goes around the Juvent plate that you can hold on to. And there's a model on their website who is sitting on the plate. So I think clearly this has been thought of and probably people are doing this. If I had this device, maybe that's how I would use it because again, it might have an impact locally, but it's not well studied in that way. And I wanted to double click back on the power plate comparison. So remember power plate vibrating displacement up and down at two to three, or if, the, if you have the higher mode, like the move and the professional devices up to four millimeters, again, at around 30 to 40 Hertz. So those devices are going to generate more like three to five G's of acceleration. And that is something that you can stand on and you can feel that in your hips and you can feel that in your spine. So you actually have to adjust your posture accordingly. So this is not like putting a power plate on your pelvis. If anybody that's again, stood on one of these devices, you know what that would probably not feel good. They're also very heavy because they're very powerful. So that's not going to work out well. This is not that, but this could be a good substitute for that for the right person. And I'll explain that. Before I get to who is the right person for this, let me talk about the app. So the OsteoBoost app is a, a well-designed app. It does communicate with the device so it can help you to remember to use it. It can help with compliance. I now get daily notifications to do my OsteoBoost session. And when you do it, it syncs with the app. So it'll stop telling you to do it. Now, it also helps to track certain things like your calcium intake. You can track in it. You can keep your imaging results in there so you can keep them in one place and track this over time. My guess is that they're going to continue to develop the app and add some additional features. But right now, really, it's just good for compliance. It's good for reminders, but you don't have to use it. Oh, I just forgot one more thing. 
One more thing that the app does is it does track your steps because it connects with Apple Health. So if your if your phone or whatever Apple device you're using is tracking your steps, then this will actually follow through into the app as well. So you can track your steps in addition to this, and those that's an important criteria as well for a, a global perspective on bone health. This is definitely a valuable adjunct for certain populations. So who is that population? Well, what I'll say about my audience in my patients is that we have some. We'll just call it what it is. We get some badass patients. We've got some badass followers, Osteo Collective members who are working their butts off to improve their bone. It's amazing. Unfortunately, not everybody can do that. Not everybody can start jumping off of stuff, even doing heel drops, doing high intensity resistance training. Not everybody with osteoporosis has the ability to do these things. And that's okay. I often get carried away. And this is one of my own faults as a person. I, I have this bias towards being very active, being aggressive. This is why I'm an orthopedic surgeon. It's why I'm a very active father. I love being involved in stuff, but that's me. Now, some of my patients like to do that as well, but not all. In fact, I would argue probably there's a lot more people who are more passive, who are looking for things to be done to them. And that is not a slight or a wrong thing. That is just simply who they are and where they are at this point in time, or because of other things like comorbidities, like medical conditions, you know, reasons where people have to continue to take drugs like steroids because of autoimmune diseases. Like there are infinite number of reasons why somebody could be losing bone and somebody could potentially not participate in some of the therapies we talk so much about, like high intensity resistance, impact, hormones, et cetera. So for people who are seeing bone loss or who are at risk for bone loss, this could be a really good tool to help to slow down that bone loss, particularly in the lumbar spine and in the hips. And if you have the ability to do all the other things, then you might actually find this is a reasonable adjunct. This is something that you can just simply add on. You can wear it around the house. You can do light activities in it. You just wear it for 30 minutes a day. It's going to continue to stimulate bone, particularly again in the hips and the spine, which is where we want it. My experience in using it is that it's comfortable. I've been wearing it this whole time. You can't hear it. I'm not even sure you can see it. My wife found it comfortable. This is something that she could wear. I think compliance here is very realistic. This is very achievable. So then how do we get this thing? Well, the company would love for this in the future to be covered by insurance, to be covered by Medicare. And that is ultimately their goal. If you've heard me talk about the commissioner medical system, you know, I am not a big advocate for waiting for the system to fix you or waiting for the system to approve the thing that you want. I think that is a waiting game that can take too long. I have seen too many people wait for the system to fix them. The system doesn't fix them. It fails them. It does this regularly. They end up with a hip fracture, spine fracture, changes in life style and potentially dying. So I don't like waiting for the insurance industry if we don't have to. Currently, there is a cash pay price for this device. It's $995 if you were to go to their website. I was able to work with the company to get a discount of $50 for my YouTube audience and an even higher discount if uh, you are a member of our Osteo Collective community. So if you're in the community, don't use the code on YouTube, use the code in the community. Um, and that'll get you at least a little bit off of this device to help you to get this into your hands if this is something you think is appropriate for you. So then mechanically, how do you do it? Well, if you go to the description on YouTube, there is a link and there is a code. And if you follow the link, it'll take you to their website. You can use the code, you'll get the discount. And then you have to get a prescription. And this is where it's a little bit different than like a supplement or whatever. You have to get a prescription, but you can get this from your conventional medical doctor, your primary care doctor. There is very low risk in this. And I'm even bringing up the potential risks, but it's extremely low. In the study, there was only a conversation around back pain and some people that had episodes of back pain while wearing the device, but they all got better when they took the device off. So was that really from the device? We don't know, but extremely low risk. And there's really nothing other than that to worry about. So your primary care doctor might just write you for this prescription. Anyway, of course, there's the form on the website. The other thing that OsteoBoost has done is to engage with a telehealth company, not mine, but a telehealth company where you can have what's called an asynchronous visit, meaning that they just review your data and then they write you a prescription without actually seeing you face to face through a telehealth visit. So it's called an asynchronous telehealth visit. And you can do that. I think it's $30 on their website. So I hope that makes sense in why I am 
taking a, a new stance with this device to say that, f especially for the audience that isn't able to do a lot of the stuff that we talk about, this is a device that can be used passively, once you put it on, it can be used passively to help slow down bone loss from a mechanical perspective with very little, if any risk whatsoever. So I think there is actually probably a larger audience for this device than a lot of the other stuff that I talk about, because frankly, there are so many people with osteoporosis, especially older women, where this could be a valuable adjunct to their care. So that's it for this one. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. And here's to aging with strength and grace.